All right, here are a few more examples using the direct comparison um, test or the limit comparison test to show whether a particular series will converge or diverge. Um, in this case, notice we have 1 plus sine of n over 10 to the n. The trick a lot of times if you have sine or cosine is recall that sine is always between positive 1 and negative 1. So that means if we add 1 to the middle, well, 1 plus sine of n is always between positive 2 and 0. And that means that 1 plus sine of n over 10 to the n, that's going to be less than or equal to 2 over 10 raised to the n um, for all n for all n greater than or equal to 1. So the idea in this case is, um, well, 2 over 10 to the n, do we know anything about that particular series? And I've got another example down below, so let me squeeze this one in here. Well, if you think about, um, again, the series 2 over 10 to the n, you can always factor the 2 out of this. Notice the 2 doesn't have an n on it, so I can just pull that out front. And then I'm left with 1 over 10 to the n. Hopefully this is starting to look a little more familiar. And the trick is you can write 1 as 1 to the n, because 1 to any power is still 1, so I can tack an n on top of that. But now I can rewrite this one one more time. So my 2's out front. I've got 1 tenth raised to the n, and this is now a geometric series. And this is going to converge because my number, one-tenth, is smaller than one. So this is a convergent geometric series. We've showed that one plus sine of n, so don't look at my next example, we've showed that one plus sine of n over ten to the n is smaller than that. Well, since the geometric series converges and this one is smaller, this series will also converge as well. So there's an example of the direct comparison test. Um, on my next series here, my next example, I'm going to use from n equals 2 to infinity of square root of n over n. And again, the thing I'm going to compare this one to I take the highest power on top, the highest power on the bottom. Well, this is n to the 1 half over n to the first. This is equivalent to n to the 1 half. And again, if I think about this as being a series and put the summation out in front of the 1 over n to the 1 half, that is a divergent p series. Again, recall that this power has to be strictly greater than 1. Well, if I look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the a sub n, that's square root of n over n minus 1. If I divide that, if I make this stuff my b sub n, if I divide all of that, that's going to be equivalent to multiplying by n to the 1 half over 1. And this is going to give me the limit as n goes to infinity. This is square root of n times square root of n. That'll give me n. Nothing's going on in the denominator. Again, as n goes to infinity, infinity, the highest power on top is the same as the highest power on the bottom. I can just take the ratio of their coefficients and get this limit to be 1. So again, in this case, it says that both of these series will do the same thing. Since I compared it to a divergent p-series, that again means that this original series that we started with must also be divergent as well. Okay. Let's look at one more example here. So in this case, we have n factorial over n raised to the n. And you know sometimes it's good to get a feel for these. So maybe plug in a couple terms, obviously. And recall that you know a factorial, for example, 5 factorial, that's just 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we'll get 1 over 1. That'll be our first term. I'll get 2 times 1. If I plug in a 2, I'll get 2 times 2. If 
I plug in a 3, I'll get 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 times 3 times 3, um, etc. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. So intuitively to me it seems like um, each term is probably getting smaller because notice the first number is always going to be equal to 1, but then you're multiplying it by something smaller than 1, multiplying it by something smaller than 1, multiplying it by something smaller than 1, so it's going to keep making this number shrink. So certainly the terms are getting smaller, but again that doesn't justify whether it converges or diverges. But let's write out n factorial. So n factorial over n to the n, if we write it out generically, I'll have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. And obviously this is assuming that n is relatively large. So then I'll have n times n times n times n times n times n. And let's think about this one for a second. So we're getting 1 here at the beginning. This is always something less than or equal to 1. This is always something less than or equal to 1, etc., all the way down the line. And that means in that case I can claim that n factorial over n to the n is less than or equal to, well, the first term is 1, this is something smaller than 1, the next one's something smaller than 1, the second one's something smaller than 1. So everything is going to be smaller than 1, including the last two terms, but I'm actually going to keep those. I have 2 over n times 1 over n. And again, I can con conclude this because everything in the middle that I'm kind of leaving out is a number smaller than 1. Okay, And 2 over n times 1 over n, that's equivalent to 2 over n squared. But again, if we think about this now as being a, a p-series, 2 over n squared is equivalent to, we can pull the n out front and have 1 over n squared as n goes to 1 to infinity. And again, this is an example of a convergent p-series. Okay, so I've now shown that my original series that I started off with, for all n greater than or equal to 1, this is less than or equal to 2 over n squared. Well, since my p-series converges, that implies that the original series is convergent as well. Okay, so this one's certainly not as straightforward. You know, you've got some factorials and these this power of n, you n to this power of n. So in this case, you know, if you don't have a feel for it, write out a few terms and see what's happening. And again, this is one where you have to think about things. You know, it's not completely mechanical. Um, you know, you really have to to argue and convince yourself that this inequality that we've done here at the bottom is in fact correct. But once you have that, you're off and running, and you've got a convergent p-series. And like I said, this last one I think is a little tricky. Take a look at it, you know, write out a few more terms if it, if it is baffling a little bit to you, and um, see if you can't convince yourself of this last part.